What's up, Brian Tonk here, and Apple just released the iOS 14 public beta so everyone can finally get their hands on it. And if you haven't signed up for Apple's public beta, you can right here at the link on screen for free. And there are instructions for just how to load the public betas on all your devices. But this is just a warning, right? These are all betas. And honestly, iOS 14 is one of the most stable ones we've seen in a long time. I still do recommend that you install this on a secondary phone in case you have maybe some crucial apps that might not play nice with it. And that's just me setting your expectations because it is a beta. And honestly, I don't want you to come back and blame me if something goes wrong. So look, on the flip side of it, it is really one of the best that we've ever seen from Apple. So I'm going to break down my fave five things from iOS 14. And these are the things that will really make the biggest impact with how I use it. So I think that my favorites will probably be a little different from yours. So I would love to hear yours as well. You know where to put them in the comments down below. All right. So let's start off with the number one thing that I love in iOS 14 and you're going to instantly play with. And you know that it's got to be the widgets. Yes, we know widgets have been on Android phones for geez, at least 10 years and on the Mac even before that. But iOS just does them both better, all of them better. And anyone with a brain will honestly admit that. Now, they're cleaner. They fit within the look and feel of iOS iPhone users. We have never had widgets before. And you know what? You're going to love them. But there's already a small way that they can make them better. Let's make them more interactive to show more data. For example, you can create a stack of widgets. And when you swipe on the stack, it switches between the different app widgets in that stack. Well, I'd like to be able to swipe on a standalone widget, not a stack, and just see more information from that specific app widget. It would make them even more useful. So you know what I'm saying? Like, let's have more interactive individual widgets. And also, can we not limit the widgets to the side section of iPadOS 14? I'm sorry for this detour, but like, why can't we truly customize the tablet experience like we can on the iPhone? Or is that giving us too much control, Apple? Ooh, I know that is scary sometimes. Now, let's just show the iPad Pro that same love that iPhones are getting. Apple, you do not want me to throw a bad one at you. You know what I'm talking about? I'll wait. I'm waiting, okay? All right, now my second favorite thing in iOS 14, look, less is more, and this is the smallest change with the biggest impact. Phone calls, FaceTime calls, Siri prompts no longer take over the entire screen. Like, this is just a nice little clean notification at the top of the screen, no more full screen takeovers. It's all about this more compact UI. This for me is a huge deal. It, it might be the biggest change that you feel every day. It might be my number one favorite thing the more honestly the more that I think about it because I just love this and maybe look how pathetic I've become like I just wanted no full screen takeovers to be happy with iOS 14 all right number three numero tres picture in picture video the ability to just do other things jump into other apps surf on other safari web pages while a freaking video is playing for my info absorbing sponge of a brain this is a game changer for how I'm going to use my devices now this isn't active for all apps in the beta right now, like the dedicated YouTube app yet, but there is a way around it. So if you want a YouTube picture in picture window, you'll have to use the Safari browser and go to the YouTube site. There's a channel that I would recommend called Brian Tong, really good content. Sometimes he looks like an Asian skunk or even an Asian usher, but it's a good channel. So play a video from that channel, watch it all the way through, like, and subscribe. <laughs> okay, I'll stop, but you'll need to make it full screen first on your um, iOS device and then you can reduce it to the picture in picture window by hitting that icon. Now, do not close that YouTube page in Safari that it came from, but you can go back to the home screen, maybe open up another app while it's still playing. And if you wanna go back to Safari, you can, right? Go back, hit Safari. This time though, open up a new page by hitting that icon in the corner and do some research or reading while that video is playing at the same time. Now you can move it around to any corner, any corner that you want. You can shrink the size of it. You can increase the size of it. You can move it off screen, make it disappear while the audio is still playing for you. You still have the little arrow tab and then just swipe that thing to bring it back up on screen. Like this isn't just eye candy. This is actually gonna be useful. And it's another feature that I just love. All right, number four for my fave five features coming to iOS 14. And it's more of a combination of software and hardware, but the AirPods just graduated to a whole nother level in iOS 14. You can also throw in iPadOS and macOS. Big Sur, 
I had to do it. But you're gonna be able to have a seamless handoff between devices for AirPods, and it's an ecosystem hook, right? That is gonna make your life so much easier. What is not to love about that? All right, the last one, number five. This is the back tap to launch apps. I know now this is an accessibility option. I need to know what wizardry that they're doing to make this happen. It can still feel a little beta, but you can now double tap or triple tap the back of your phone to launch a feature or function in iOS like uh, launching Control Center, or you can use a shortcut that you have made in the shortcut app, which you probably rarely touched, like launching the Google Assistant or playing your BTS playlist. Yeah, now I love it, but again, this is not always the most accurate. Still, I don't care. It. I still just love tapping that app from the back. So for me, widgets, the compact UI, picture in picture video, AirPods handoff, double tap. Those are my fave five. There were just so many that I could have picked. You know, I just wanted to choose the ones that impacted me the most. And I just left plenty of others out there on the table for you to pick up. But when someone tells you like, just say five, you kind of have to be picky about it. So also honorable mention goes to privacy. I know, right? Like that's not sexy, but Apple is really doubling down here to show us what apps are really doing behind the scenes and then how much they're tracking us. Look, TikTok, Reddit and LinkedIn, they were already caught for snooping on your clipboard contents with the new iOS 14 beta. LinkedIn claimed it was a bug and that they will be fixing it ASAP. Okay, guys, sure. Is that how I wink? Okay. Uh, TikTok, they might not even be around with all the scrutiny that is around them right now, but come on, you guys, that's a bad app. <laughs> and it's not like these are some of the biggest apps used by millions of people daily. But Apple's privacy policies and really commitment to get even better with iOS 14. Love it. Okay, so it's now your turn. I'd love to hear what are your fave five iOS 14 features if you've been able to try them out. The public beta, it is out now. It's just something fun for all of us to do like during these pandemic times. So I just hope you can enjoy it and just let us all know in the comments what you like about it. Plus, sometimes in the comments, you always find gems like these or this one from Tabitha. Hey, even I'm still not used to it, but different times call for different hairstyles. All right, that's gonna do it for now. If you like this video, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell ding, to get all my videos when they drop. Plus, if you wanna get even deeper, you can check out my weekly podcast, The Apple Bits XL, where we cover it all with special guests. So subscribe to that too. And all my content is independent and you can support the podcast and all my videos at patreon.com slash Tong. So thanks so much for watching everybody and we will see you next time. Take care everybody. Peace and love.